We're gonna continue taking a look at our acids now, and you'll notice that on each of these compounds, there are some protons ready to be given away, so that's what makes them all acids. Um, acids, remember, are molecular compounds, and all of them are gonna encounter water here. Um, so they're molecular compounds that ionize, and ionize means form ions. Um, in water. So once I take all these compounds and I drop them into water, I'm going to get some aqueous ions. Um, so we want to be able to write and predict what the products are of these reactions. Um, here is the first one, HCl, and I'm going to add over the arrow some water to say that I drop this into water or bubble it into water since it's a gas. Um, what I get is I get H plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. So what was a molecule has now ionized or broken apart into ions. Um, next up is a different way to show this reaction, and this is gonna be the, the style that we prefer. Um, so with our acids, remember that they are um, going to be proton donors, or another way that we described one was that they produced hydronium. Um, and so we're gonna look for both of these, donating protons and producing hydronium as I write the rest of these reactions that I'll have water here. So an acid donates a proton. I'm gonna use an arrow just to help myself think about where that proton goes. If that proton leaves, this was an H plus that's leaving, it's gonna leave behind a Cl minus. And that Cl minus is aqueous because I've got water here now. And then the other product is an H2O with an H plus attached. So H2O plus an H is H3O, and it was a positive that moved over. So now I have hydronium and chloride. Notice these happen to be like the reverse order of this. It doesn't matter, right? A plus B or B plus A, it's all the same thing. Um, so what I can see here is that my acid was a proton donor, and then I always get as one of my products that hydronium ion. Um, so every acid's gonna always have hydronium as one of your products there. Um, I'll leave this one for you to practice, but I do want to draw your attention here to a small change that happened. Now there's some back and forth arrows, and those should remind you of equilibrium um, back in chapter 12. Um, these reactions with hydrochloric acid, they only go forward, and that's gonna be true of our strong acids that they completely break apart into ions. In contrast, we see these equilibrium arrows which say, hey, we're going to make some products but keep some reactants. And that's going to be true for what we call weak acids, where we'll see forward and backward arrows, or sometimes you'll see them written as half arrows, um, maybe in a textbook or another setting. Um, and this is where you're going to have some reactants and some products, not entirely products like I see here with the strong one. Um, so let's take a look here at the um, carbonic acid with water. Notice when I have more than one hydrogen, what actually happens is that I lose one hydrogen at a time. So proton donor, I'm gonna send an H plus over, but just one at a time. So if I lose one H plus, I have HCO3. Because I lost a positive, what's left behind is negative. This would be aqueous. And then I have H3O plus aqueous. Um, again, it was an acid and I should get a hydronium at the end. So just losing one proton at a time. Um, one more to show you, here's an organic acid. Um, this is in your kitchen actually, this is vinegar or acetic acid. And so acetic acid again has this COOH, the H gets donated, and I'm left with CH3, COO, it's now negative because it lost that positive. And then I have hydronium, and that's what I was expecting to see, right? Um, the name of this anion is acetate. So here's those naming rules where an eight becomes an ic acid. And so we see like in biochem um, relationships between lactate and lactic acid. They're just different between, or with one um, proton um, is the only difference between them. So I'll leave a couple more um, here for you. Um, remember all of our acids are gonna donate protons and produce hydronium ions.